Hello and welcome back to K-Tech Designs. My name is Seth. In this video, I will show you how I modeled and designed this dishwasher status text wheel in FreeCAD. So what I'm showing you here is um, an assembly that I did and I may make a video showing how I put that together if you guys think that's um, you know worth our time. Um, and uh, I'll show you the inside here. So I looked on Thingiverse and I found one that was pretty simple and had the basic text that I needed. Um, but upon printing it and putting it together, I found that the design was not good. The cover didn't stay on, the interface of the knob to the wheel broke immediately, and the text was a little lackluster. So here's a remix that I did go through my thought process in the design as we go through it. So with that, let's get started. So from the start page, let's create a new part. Let's go to the part design workbench. I'm going to create a part and then a body within that part. Let's start a sketch on the top plane. Let's use a rectangle select the vertical axes and draw down to the left. Let's take a line and go up to the right, another line below the axes in about the same direction. Now let's draw an arc. Uh, where's the arc? Let's draw an arc connecting the two endpoints. Uh, about like that. So that's the basic shape. Now let's clean it up and give it some dimensions. Let's grab the arc in this line and make those tangent. Uh, let's dimension this leg horizontally to two millimeters. Uh, let's make these two endpoints symmetric to the horizontal axis. Same with these two points. Let's go ahead and trim out this middle leg here. Something like that. Uh, let's make these coincident and this leg should be vertical. I just make that one vertical as well. Let's dimension this vertical leg to be 7.5 millimeters. Let's dimension this gap here and that will be 1.3 millimeters. And this dimension is very important because this is setting the material width that I have found was good for flexing. If it's too thick, then the material just snaps. If it's too thin, it also doesn't uh, snap back into place. You can just plastically deform it very easily. Now let's dimension this uh, arc here. Make that a little closer to that shape. So let's grab the center and dimension to the horizontal axis, 6.3 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and dimension this arc right away. We'll give it a diameter of 6.75. Next, let's dimension the center of this arc to the vertical axis, 17.5 millimeters. And then finally, I'm going to give these two uh, lines an angle between them, which is 8 degrees. That's it. Let's close that. And let's pad that. And I'm going to set the dimension to 2.5. Now this dimension here, you could play around with a little bit uh, to, to suit your preference. So the thicker you go, the harder the spring is going to be. The thinner you go, the softer the spring is going to be. So I would not recommend going any thinner than this. If you want to increase the spring constant, um, you can make this like 2.7, 2.8. I probably wouldn't go to 3. That would be too thick. So anyway, let's leave it at 2.5. Now finally, I'm going to add some fillets. I'll make those pretty thin at 0.5. 
grab this corner and this one as well. Okay, the spring is now complete. So again, from the start page, let's create a new part, a part container and a body. Now let's create a sketch that we are going to revolve around the Z axis. I'm going to do a multi, not a spline, a multi line. Start here, work our way down, go to an angle, go down to the horizontal axis, over, up at a bit of an angle, and hit escape to cancel. Uh, I'm going to draw a horizontal line from the top here, which will be used to drive this arc tangent. There. So we can take these two, make them tangent. Um, let's make a couple points on the horizontal axis here to create some handles for symmetric sketching. So these two points I want symmetric, these other points here I want symmetric, and then these two symmetric as well. Now let's grab these two and dimension their diameter to 19.5. I'm going to dimension these outer, this outer diameter to 35. Let's drag it down here a little bit. Let's dimension this point over the horizontal axis to 25.4, so one inch. Let's dimension this leg to 19 millimeters. I'm going to pick an angle to this outer leg here of 92, or essentially 2 degrees. Uh, I'm going to dimension this arc 6 millimeters horizontal, so I don't necessarily need to pick the diameter or the radius. And finally, I want a, and let's move that, I guess I can't, there we go. I want an angle between this leg and the vertical axis of 52, sorry, just 50 degrees. And we'll close that. Now we'll take this sketch and do a revolve. There we go, click OK. So let's add some grip to this part. Um, so I'm going to make a, a square cutout on the surface, not all the way through. We'll start about here and go to about here. I will revolve that pattern around. So let's start a sketch on the XZ plane. Um, I'm going to make the, if I can, let's close out of it, go back into that sketch. I want to be able to see the model geometry. I'm going to reuse this line here. So I will, in this case, link to external geometry. And then I'm going to make a line on top of that. So I could go back to hiding that. I'm going to make sure that this endpoint is coincident to this line. I'm then going to make a horizontal dimension of 4.75 millimeters and uh, do we lose it? Looks like I could have messed that up there. So we'll do that over again. I think what I'll do is I'll draw my line first and then I will do my reference, make those coincident. Okay, now while I can still see it, I'll go from the bottom 
That's 4.75 as well. And then we'll redo the top here. 4.75. Alright, so now that serves as the route line. Clear that. For our sketch. So now let's create another sketch. And we'll do it on the XY plane. I'm going to offset it 4.75 because that's where we started this sketch here. Now this one is pretty simple. I'm going to hide the body but keep that sketch visible. So what we want to do is make a... I guess I'm going to have to do this as a multi-line. I want to make a rectangle. I could cap this off as a straight line, but just to ensure that I cut through the body completely, I'm going to do it like this. So I'll make these two equal. Okay, I guess I can only pick uh, legs there. And I'll make these two equal. And I'll make these two equal. I'll make these two perpendicular. Okay, so that locks in my square. Now this one I'm going to go ahead and just dimension because uh, it can just be close enough at 18. That's roughly outside of the uh, body so we get a complete cut. Um, finally let's just dimension from these two points 3.5 millimeters. Now with this sketch selected, let's go for a, uh, I think it's a loft pipe. It's probably a pipe and we'll sweep it along this line. There we go. So you can see we could back it up a little bit if we wanted to do like 17.5 or 17.75 but I want to ensure that I cut through the material completely so I'm going to leave it like that. Let's click OK. Now I actually want this corner to be chamfered and you're not going to be able to just pick this edge and do a, a chamfer unless we are now. Right, so I want that chamfer just isn't going to cut it, pun intended, I guess. Well, maybe we could live with that. We did 1.3. Okay. Well, let's add, let's add this edge too. All right, well, that can actually work. We can live with that. The first time I did this, I didn't get the chamfer that I wanted, and so I was actually going to do a revolved uh, fill. But that chamfer is going to work for now, so I'm going to leave it like that for the sake of simplicity. So finally, what we need to do is we need to grab those two features and do a polar pattern. We want to use the base Z axis, and we want 22 occurrences. That looks good. Now we can dress this up a little bit. Let's put a fillet on this edge. We'll make it two millimeters. Let's put a chamfer on this edge and we'll make that one. Now that's pretty much a complete uh, knob there. But now we need to make our um, interlocking features with the text wheel. So we can do that with a, a cut sketch, but I think in this case, I'm gonna use a subtractive box. So now what we need for that is a five millimeter length, a 28.5 width, and a five millimeter height. So that's the right size, but it's not in the right place. And what happened? We lost it. Thought I hit okay. Five 
28.5, 5 again. Apparently I clicked no reference. So I'll pick that top plane. And then I'm going to move its attachment. So it's just going to be negative 2.5, which is half of 5. Negative 14.25 and zero there. So I just moved it into the uh, midplane of in both x and y directions and I left z the same. The final feature to make is the um, semicircle cutout that will snap in place with the text wheel. So I'll make another sketch. I'll do it on the yz plane. I'm going to draw a circle about there. I'll have a mirrored one on the other side. I'll dimension it from the bottom 2.5 millimeters. Uh, I'll make the diameter 1.3. Uh, let's make these two equal and also symmetric. And finally, their spacing between them is 28.5, which is the same distance of our subtractive rectangle cutout. I'm going to do a pocket, uh, not reversed, symmetric. And 5 millimeters is correct because that is the width of our, our key here. Okay, that's it. The knob is fully modeled and we're ready to move on to the next one. So again, from the start page, let's create a new part. I'm already in the part design workbench, so go ahead and create a part and create a body within that part. Let's create a sketch on the top plane uh, let's create a rectangle and we will dimension the uh, horizontal leg to 114.3 and actually the uh, vertical leg will be the same because it's a square and then we can take this corner this corner and the center and make those symmetric I'm going to go ahead and add a sketch fillet, a constraint preserving, a sketch fillet on every corner. Mess that up. There we go. I'll select all of them. And when I dimension their radii, they'll all be set to equal. And we'll make that radii 19 millimeters. Okay, select close. We'll pad that sketch to 2 millimeters. Actually, let's go back into that sketch and we're going to add some other components right away. So we know we want a center hole. Um, and let's dimension that to. That's not right. Uh, 19 millimeters. Close that. Now let's create a sketch on the top plane again. I'm going to close it right away so that I can make the offset position of two millimeters, which is the part thickness. Um, now we're going to create the window, the text viewing window. Uh, let's quickly make the the key locator right there. Make that symmetric. Uh, let's click that. Make it symmetric to the horizontal axis. We want the width to be 2.5 millimeters and the height to be 5.5 and rather than linking to external geometry I'm just going to dimension off the the vertical 
which of course would be 114.3 over 2. Now let's go ahead and make the uh, viewing window. I'm going to grab two lines here radially out from the center. I'm going to make an arc and a second arc closer to the center. I'll grab these two external vertices and make them symmetric. Unless I do it incorrectly. There we go. Now what we want to do is let's dimension these. Let's dimension the angle between these two lines. Let's make it 110. Next I'm going to dimension the diameter of these arcs. The outer one is 95.25 and the inner one is 44.5. Now in order to make this cut work we're going to have to convert these two parts into construction geometries so I'm going to split this line make those coincident make these parallel and do the same down here grab these two and convert them to construction Oh, it looks like I lost my arc, or my angle dimension, sorry. So I'll just put that back in. All right, so let's close that. Let's pocket that. I'm just going to say through all. Now I'm going to add in a, a fillet of 5 millimeters. Delete that face, we don't need that. All right, we're pretty much there. The last thing is to make the pocket and do a pattern. Again, with most CAD packages, there's more than one way to achieve the same thing as far as geometry goes. And so you may see me switch between sometimes doing a sketch fillet, sometimes doing a fillet feature. And it's, it's really arbitrary, there's sometimes no rhyme or reason um, if I have a good reason for why I'm doing it rather than just my preference at the time I'll let you know <laughs> um, so with that being said I could have had the uh, pockets all sketched out and um, made in this pad kinda like I did this hole and also when I made this pocket I could have added this hole to that it, it really depends on uh, how I want the model to flow Let's put the pockets in here. Um, part of the reason why we could do it that way is for one, we have more control over it with a pattern. And secondly, I can turn it into an actual whole feature and not just a pocket if I change the way that this gets attached. So maybe in the future I actually want to use a flathead screw or something. Um, it's very easy to just change the whole feature type rather than going into the sketch, changing the whole diameter, and then adding a a counter uh, bore or a counter sink to every single edge which then has the potential to break um, because of how it's made. So let's go ahead and make a sketch on the top plane again. I close out of that to change the position to two millimeters off the plane. Let's draw a little hole here and I'm going to do this off of a bolt circle so I'm going to grab a circle and attach it to that circle this becomes a reference geometry I'm going to dimension this diameter 230 on that bolt circle and then finally I just need a line connecting our hole to the center so that I can dimension the angle to be 45 degrees. Go ahead and put a diameter on that hole, 5.15. Click 
close. I'll just do a regular hole in this instance. And then we can do our uh, pattern. And I'm going to do it off of the Y axis, I believe. That's correct. And we'll do four of them. Um, let's see if it's the Z. There it is. And that's it. Another very simple component that lets you 3D print it in either direction. It won't matter. Uh, but mainly the purpose of doing it this way was if you have a flat plate or a satin finished plate, maybe you want that surface to be the visible one. Or maybe you have a, a textured plate and you don't want that to be visible. You want maybe to do ironing or you are fine with the standard finish that 3D print has, this gives you options. If I had any specific locating parts on either end forcing me to print on only one side, then that kind of pigeonholes you when it comes to design. And with that, let's move on to the next model. So from the start page, let's create a new part. I'm going to create a part container and a solid body. Now for this text wheel, I'm going to use a slightly different modeling technique than I usually do on this video. I usually stay away from additive primitives and subtractive primitives, but I figured it'd be uh, nice to try them out uh, for once and see how that works. So in this model, I'm going to be using these modeling techniques to make the part. So let's start with a primitive cylinder. And let's make that radius 50.8 millimeters. We'll make the height uh, just two. So it's a two uh, millimeter thick slab, four inches in diameter. Um, I'm going to pick the, pick the X, Y plane. Click OK on that. I'm then going to make the selector uh, cutout. So I'm going to do a primitive subtractive cylinder. And that radius is 3.5. And the height, I'll just make it 3 to make sure it cuts through completely. And then we'll pick the top plane for that. Um, now I'm going to move it to the corner here, so I think I just need to pick X58. Oops, that is not what I thought it was changing. Sorry, that was strange. It was 50.8. Now let's add a fillet to that. Probably two millimeters would be good. okay on that. Uh, let's bump that up to three. Three millimeters on that fillet. Now I'm going to do a polar pattern on the subtractive cylinder and the fillet. Picking the Z axis and I want three instances because we have uh, three texts we're gonna do. And you can use this method to make a four text or five text wheel. Um, three was just the minimum that I thought was necessary to make sense. Next I want to make the uh, key that connects to the knob. So I'm going to use an additive box. I'll pick the top plane. That box shape should be four millimeters wide, 28.5 millimeters long, and only three millimeters high. Uh, and the reason for that is because I don't need the knob and the wheel to be size on size. I want a little bit of a loose fit there, except in the width, meaning, so from end to end, where I have those interlocking features, I want it to be size on size to get a proper lock. But I don't need its height to be so tall that we bottom out on the underside of the knob keyway. And I don't want it so wide that uh, we make it difficult to put the knob in place. 
So I'll leave it with that, and then I'm going to change the box position. So I'm going to go ahead and change the Z to 2, and we'll do a negative 2 to center the width, and a negative 14.25 to center the length. Now I'm actually also going to do a draft. Uh, let's pick this leg here, or this face here. And the neutral plane I actually want to be this top face. And the pull direction, I'm going to go ahead and I think I pick a face, right? Or is that a leg? I'll pick that one. Now let's add some faces to that. This one, this one, and if I can get it there, this one. Okay. So that will further make it easier for the, the, the knob to fit in place. So now with that, I'm going to do a subtractive cylinder right in the middle. Radius of 10 is fine. And a height of 6 is also fine. Click OK on that. So now let's go ahead and put on our uh, semi-circle bosses. We'll print on the YZ sketch, or YZ plane. I'm going to close the sketch so that I can see the model here. So what I'm going to do is similarly to the knob, I'm going to make a pair of circles. I'll make them equal. I will make them symmetric. I'm going to make the diameter equal to 1.143. Let's dimension them apart, 28.3. And I'll do their height from the horizontal axis, 4.4. Actually, that could be 4.5. 4.45. That's close enough. If you wanted to get it spot on, what you could do is uh, collect this edge here, which probably isn't the worst way to go. Make that driven. And then I'll take that point in this circle and just stick them there. That's close enough. Okay, close that, and then we'll do a symmetric pad. And remember, it's only four millimeters wide. But we actually don't need it to be that long. Three will be plenty. So next, I want to put a little ring on here, a ring boss. And that's because I want the cover um, to stay off of the text as the text is spinning around. I don't want those to wear out or get scuffed up. So we'll put a little uh, bearing face, I guess, would be more appropriate on it. And that's going to be two millimeters off the top of the plane. And we'll just do uh, two concentric circles like this. And I'm going to add two points so that I can dimension them on, the, uh, on their thickness. I'll just dimension the outer one. The outer circle diameter is 44 millimeters, and I want to make their thickness 2.5. Uh, boss extrude that, and that only needs to be 1.5 millimeters. All right, now we're ready to place our text. So the way that this is designed is this, um, the spring will lock the wheel in place. Uh, every time this 
space is in the opening of the cover. So that means that our text needs to be right in between this area. And to make that easier for us, I'm going to make a sketch on the top plane. I'll go ahead and make it two millimeters off of the plane so that I can see it a little bit better. So the way we're gonna make this reference sketch is by um, creating some triangles here. All right, and we know that this length needs to be 50.8. So all of these are gonna be 50.8. I'll make these two legs equal. Um, and then I'm gonna actually draw these sketches not as construction geometry, because I want to see them when the sketch is closed, like that. Uh, and this is where I'm going to place my text. So I also want to know where the center is. So I'm going to go ahead and split this line, make these two parallel, also make them equal. And I'm going to create another line off of that and that will be perpendicular. So now that's my center and I'm gonna lock this in place with an angle 120. Now let's do the same for the other two sides. put in my final perpendicular sketch. All right, so now from here, what we need to do is we need to go over to the draft workbench and we're gonna use the shape string command. All right, so this string will be clean. Let's try to spell correctly. The size will be 4.5 millimeters and I'm gonna pick a font file You should know where your uh, fonts are stored. For Windows users, it's your C drive, Windows fonts. And I'm going to use a font called Apple T. Click OK on that. And then for placement, I'm just going to do zeros. And we're going to use the uh, transform command to move it into place. So I'll click OK. There it is. So now let's move it. Let's change its placement to two millimeters. And we're not gonna worry about the rotation quite yet. I'm going to go to transform. Uh, I've set my increment to 0.1 millimeters and one degree. Yours may be different. And we're just going to line it up like this. Kind of eyeball it there. What looks roughly mid-plane and that looks pretty good actually. Now I can go ahead and make a clone of this and then that clone will put into this body and that will become our uh, boss extrude. Uh, but we'll do that later. I'll get all the shapes together. So I'm gonna put this into a folder. Okay, make sure that's in the part there. That way I can keep these as reference and I can recreate them. I could delete this clone, I could delete the boss extrude and I won't lose uh, the work that I did to put this in place. And I can also move this around a little bit and change it from here and this will update accordingly. So let's do our next text, uh, which is dirty, 4.5. Going to our font, pass it up, there it is. Just 
going to keep it as zeros and click OK. Let us then transform it. And so I'm going to rotate it to be about there. Bring it up. Oh, and I forgot to change its placement to two millimeters. Let's go back to our transform. And again, just picking roughly where I see center is. That might be a little bit high. Let's bring that down. I want these to be roughly the same. Actually, I'm going to put it right on. So I want to make sure that this red arrow points directly on that line. And we'll do that with this one as well. Let's clone that quick. Hide that. Now when I think it comes to changing the position of these shape strings, that does not translate to the position of the clone sketch. You can change the shape string text and that will come up through here, but the position does not. So I'll just retransform this. That one didn't have to be transformed, that was already okay. Now I'm arranging these text in a particular way so that um, a, count, a clockwise motion can be used to set each status so that you go from clean. Oh, I messed this one up. So I'm going to change this one. This one should not say dirty. This one should say running. Okay. Now you see the shape string updated there. Uh, and I'm not going to bother moving that position in this case. I'll just run it this way. That looks... That's probably it right there. So let's make the final text, which is... Uh, dirt. Dirty. Uh, text height of 4.5. And again, picking the same font. I don't want that to go all over the place, so I make it zeros. Um, go ahead and transform it in this case, aligning the green arrow to point there, making sure that the red arrow aligns on there. And let's change the placement position to two millimeters. Transform it one more time. And that looks about even to me. Hide that and clone that. Um, guess I have to pull this down a bit so that I can make it go in there. All right, so now we can hide our placement sketch. Actually, I'm going to rename that so I don't forget what it's for. Placement sketch. So I could select every single one of these and let's go back to our part design pad. Um, but I think it actually is going to force me to do one at a time. That's fine. One. And one. Okay, that's done. That wasn't too bad. Using the primitive geometry did help a little bit and who knows, it might prove more stable than making a sketch in a pad. Uh, we'll see over time if I have to make changes to this, how that shakes out. All right, so now that's done. There's only one left to do, and that's the base. So let's move on to that one. So let's make the base part now. 
Let's create a new part. Part container, body container. Now, like I said earlier, I'm going to use a little more additive primitives and such. So let's go with a box. Picking the top plane. Let's make the length 114.3. The width is the same. And the height is 5. And then I'll change its placement here. Let's change the placement here. Negative 50.8. Negative 50.8. And the zero is fine where that is. Oh, sorry. That's not quite half. So it should be negative 57.15. Negative 57.15. Now this would be one reason why I'm not going to use primitives is because of how you position them. I'm much more accustomed to positioning sketches relative to the axes and then you know making boss extrusions off of that so we'll see how this goes let's fill it the edges I want a 19 millimeter fillet I'm gonna add these two other edges and then I'm gonna change the nope that's the wrong one change the view to wireframe so that I can add the far corner Let's then do a subtractive cylinder. It can be in the center here. I want the radius to be 53.34. The height can be four millimeters. And then what we're going to do is we're going to offset that by one millimeter. Let's then do an additive cylinder right in the middle. So that's fine where that is. And this is the post that the wheel and the knob will go over to spin on. So let's make that radius 9.525. And the height we're going to make 20.5. And that's good. The position does not need to change for that. Next I'm going to put a chamfer on that edge. And I think I'm going to make it 2 millimeters. Now I'm going to do a sketch on the top plane here. Let's change its position to one millimeter. I'm going to put I'm going to put two rings on this surface, and that's going to create a bearing, uh, a bearing surface for the bottom of the text wheel to rub against, and that's going to reduce the friction. So instead of having the text wheel um, completely interface its surface with the bottom of this base uh, recess here it's only going to interface with a small portion of material so I have an outer ring and an inner ring um, and that's just to make it more stable you wouldn't want just a ring on the outside because then it'll want to bind in the center here and you don't want to just have a ring out here because then it's going to drag on the outside. So let's add a couple of points here. Just like we did before. That way we can dimension the ring thickness. Two millimeters is good. The outer diameter is going to be 89 millimeters. And this inner one, we will do um, 25 millimeters on the diameter. Okay, close that. And we're going to pad this, but it is going to be a very small interface. So I'm going to go with 0.5 millimeters. Or rather, I don't want it to keep the wheel off the uh, recess by very much. So I'm going to go with, actually, Let's make that 0.4 even smaller. Now what we want to do is make an interface for the cover to attach to. So if you remember, we put holes in the cover. So I'm going to put bosses here to interface. So we'll do a sketch on the uh, top plane. I'm going to move its attachment position to 5 millimeters offset. Let's do a sketch. And let's do a 
a connection there. Let's do a bolt circle as well, making sure that those are reference or construction rather. I think I've been using reference and construction interchangeably, which is not correct. Five millimeters there. So I apologize for that. We'll make this ring 130. And of course this becomes 45. And we'll boss extrude that 2.5 millimeters. If you remember, we made the cover two millimeters thick. So this will poke out um, just half a millimeter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna chamfer that edge. So the chamfered portion will stick out slightly. And you might wanna make that a little bit thicker depending on what kind of resolution you print with. I'm printing with a 0.2 millimeter resolution, so this worked well for me. But if you print with something a little bit bigger, you might wanna make this chamfer a little bit larger. But the way I have it designed here is that this portion from here to here is above the cover and then the cover has a complete interface. It's a size on size fit, um, friction fit, uh, to make the cover stay in place well. So now we'll grab that pad and that chamfer and we'll do another polar pattern. I want it on the Z axis and we want four of those. Now I'm gonna add a little uh, rectangle here. If you remember from the cover, I put a keyed reference to make sure that the text appears in the opening correctly and you'll see why when I um, create the spring attachment point. So I'm going to create another sketch. We'll pick the top plane. I'll move its position up five millimeters and then we're simply going to make a little rectangle here. I want it to be symmetric about the horizontal axis. The uh, spacing is 57.15. The thickness is two and the height is five. And if you remember from the cover, the cover was half a millimeter oversized. The point of this feature is not to be a tight fit or an interference fit. It's just so that you put the cover in the correct direction. So then we'll extrude that boss uh, to be just one millimeter, that's good. Not one meter, sorry. All right, so we're, we've made very good progress here. Now let's just make the final feature, which is the most complex feature in this model. Let's create a sketch. I'm gonna make it, uh, uh, place it, uh, no, not that one, this one, five millimeters up. So now we're gonna create our spring holder. So if you remember from the wheel design, the window in the text cover is about here, based on our key. Our spring lock interfaces are about here, here, and here with the text over here. So we have some choices for where we can lock the text. Um, here is not very good because it's kind of thin. And of course you could make this thicker to accommodate that, but that's not really a good design. It's kind of a waste of material, especially when you have all this space here or here. Now I, I chose to model up in this quadrant, so that's how I will demonstrate it. Um, so let's start off with a circle, roughly about there, because we want to cut all of this out. So this will be just to the inside of that uh, diameter. Then I'm going to use a multi-line, and I'm going to draw this shape like so. So this from the spring will be the uh, locking position. Okay, and then we'll go over and down. Okay, that looks good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make 
Well, I'll wait for that. I'll do some sketch fillets in these two corners, uh, but I'll do that in a minute. Um, I want to create a reference for the spring lock. And then we can dimension this placement off of that. So then I'm going to make a... Let's see if I can get in the middle there. A line to that position. Uh, the diameter of that part was a seven. Seven there. And the uh, arc length here would be 50.8. Oops. Try that again. 50.8 millimeters. And this angle is going to be 30 degrees. Okay. So we can see where we need to move this part a little bit. Now these need to be... Uh, let's see, how do I do that? Let's do a sketch like this. You should also be vertical. And you two should be equal. Now this opening... We'll start dimensioning that. This should be two millimeters. This interface with the spring is going to be pretty much size on size. Um, the way I'm going to design this is it's going to be pinched or size on size in this dimension, but here and here is going to be oversized. So there can be a little bit of slop this way which is perfectly fine. We're dealing with like half a millimeter, so that's nothing. Uh, I'm gonna dimension this way. That little leg should be 1.2 millimeters. And these should actually be equal. I guess I'll just make these two legs equal. Now let's dimension this uh, diameter to 105. Yep, that's plenty. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the rest of that. All right, so now this is locked in place. I can start dimensioning relative to this. So I'm gonna grab this edge in the center of the circle and do a horizontal dimension of 17.5. Then I'm gonna dimension this middle center of this. So this is kind of like the origin in the uh, spring model. And then we'll dimension that to six millimeters. Why don't I make these equal as well? Get that set right away. Uh, let's dimension this gap here. And that can be a bit oversized, which allows the spring uh, to flex out of the way and not uh, come into contact with the walls, but we still have enough of a lip to keep it in place, keep the spring in place. So let's dimension these two. 20 millimeters should be fine. And then let's dimension from the center here to the top. We'll do 16 millimeters. Okay, so that fully constrains that sketch. But I wanna add in some sketch fillets here and here. Oops, try that again. I'm going to make them equal and I'm going to make them three millimeters. Close that sketch and now we're going to do a pocket. Uh, we don't want the pocket to go all the way through of course and I also don't want it to come all the way to this surface. I want the spring to be up off of uh, there a little bit. So I'm going to set the depth to 3.6 And so that'll give the, uh... oh, right. It's 3.6 because we've got these uh, runners here, which are 0.4 millimeters off of here. So instead of, you know, from the total thickness of this plate is five, down four would be all the way to here. So 3.6 gives us a 0.4 millimeter thickness there. All right, that's it. That is the last component 
for the uh, text wheel dishwasher status device. Um, I did make an assembly for this and I can go through how to create an assembly to show all the um, inner parts and how they work. And if you guys think that there's a value in having me set that up, I will go ahead and do that as a, a follow-up video. Uh, just something quick showing how I you know, set up the uh, constraints and um, maybe a little bit of discussion for how I used it to help design this part. Um, so with that, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that this was uh, a neat little project for you to do and try at home. You can find the uh, STL files on my printables profile, which I will link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.